I'm back after the birth of my daughter and get to bring you the recap of the Cybertruck reveal. Hold on to your hats, there is a lot to cover here. Hope my U.S. listeners had a happy Thanksgiving weekend. This is Tesla Tidbits episode number 559 for December 2nd, 2019. This show is sponsored by my supporter, Richard. If you're in the market for a new Tesla, please consider using his referral code. Ask your salesperson to use code Richard174 or go direct to the web link ts.la slash Richard174 and pick up a 1,000-mile supercharging credit for your new vehicle. After long months of anticipation, Tesla finally revealed the Cybertruck to the world. Cybertruck is indeed the official name of the truck, and Elon was not joking at all in not only saying that it was similar to a truck from Blade Runner, but that it wouldn't be for everyone. That might be the understatement of the year if you're looking at any news related to the Cybertruck. I'm in the pretty sure I don't like it camp, but I'll get to that more later. Let's take a look at the indisputable good news from the announcement, and that's the specs and pricing on this thing. In a word, amazeballs. Cybertruck will come in three trims, a rear-wheel drive variant, an all-wheel drive variant, and a tri-motor performance variant. We'll start first with the pricing and specs of the rear-wheel drive version. Amazingly, the starting price of the truck is $39,900, US and that affords you 250 miles or better of range, according to the order page. That configuration nets you a truck that will do 0 to 60 in under 6.5 seconds, standard autopilot, 100 cubic feet of storage, 7,500 or more pounds of towing, adaptive air suspension, and up to 16 inches of ground clearance with that suspension. Upgrading to the all-wheel drive version pops the price up to $49,900, grants 300 miles or better of range, completes 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds or better, and now gives 10,000 or more pounds of towing, while retaining the other qualities of the base truck. Lastly, the tri-motor variant comes in at $69,900, lays down a blistering 2.9 second or better 0-60 to 60 time, and grants a whopping 500 miles or better of EPA-rated range. Towing capacity also jumps to 14,000 or more pounds, and again keeps the remaining qualities of the base model. The only option currently available on the truck is whether or not you want full self-driving, though Tesla says that reservation holders will be able to complete their configuration when production nears in late 2021, and the tri-motor version won't begin production until 2022. To bag a reservation for any of these models, it only takes $100, which is fully refundable if you decide not to order. So if you even think you might possibly want it, no reason not to plunk down your pre-order. So that's kind of the basics of the truck. Let's get a little deeper into some of the features. Firstly, going a bit back to its looks, but also very much in the functionality department too, the truck is made of stainless steel rather than either traditional steel or aluminum. The reveal sported the standard look as well as a matte black mule. It would seem that there will be color variants, but none have been officially confirmed as of yet. That stainless steel is no ordinary material either. From the Tesla website, quote, Cybertruck is built with an exterior shell made for ultimate durability and passenger protection. Starting with a nearly impenetrable exoskeleton, every component is designed for superior strength and endurance. From ultra-hard, 30 times cold-rolled stainless steel structural skin to Tesla armor glass, end quote. We'll get to that armor glass in a moment. Right now, I want to draw your attention to a demo they did on stage with the actual prototype for the exoskeleton. First, they brought out a traditional truck door, and Franz von Holzhausen wailed on it a few times with a sledgehammer, predictably denting it severely, and I even believe beginning to fold it from one view in the live stream. He then moved over to the Cybertruck and did the same, producing nary a mark on the vehicle. Very impressive indeed. They also showed slow motion of a 9mm bullet hitting the material and disintegrating on impact. Yes, folks, the truck is literally bulletproof to an extent. No live demo of this one, thank goodness, because much less impressive was the demo of the aforementioned armor glass. The beginning of that demo went off smoothly, where they dropped a large metal ball onto a traditional pane of glass from a given height to watch it shatter, and then moved the Tesla armor glass into position and then matched that height and more, not producing a mark on it after dropping the ball. It's when they moved to the prototype that things went a bit sideways. As Elon urged Franz to chuck the ball at the driver's window of the truck, I audibly yelled at my screen not to do it, with them already having successfully tested the sledgehammer. Murphy's Law of Live Demos almost assured failure of a second test like this, and I was not wrong. Franz's shot spiderwebbed the glass of the driver's window to Elon's horror, and could easily be audibly heard saying, quote, Oh my f***. 
God, end quote, when it happened. Not to leave well enough alone, they tried again on the rear driver's side window to the same result. Elon later released videos showing them testing on the same prototype vehicle without issue, and again, I'm firmly convinced they just pushed Murphy too far trying for two successful demos in one shot. The six and a half foot bed of the truck can completely be enclosed, and it's a self-contained powered system, which Tesla is calling the Volt. If you need a hand while loading things in, you can put the truck into load mode, and the back of the truck will squat down. Add to this the extra ramp that can extend from the tailgate, and you can quite literally walk or roll things into the bed. At the very end of the presentation, they loaded a Tesla-designed ATV into the back by simply driving it up there and then plugged it into charge. Very cool. Oh, and that ATV? It'll be an option for the truck at the beginning of its life, per a tweet from Elon. Some of the lesser touted features of the truck include both 110 and 220 volt power sources, storage under the bed, as well as the ability to use the truck's air compressor that powers the adaptive suspension for your own purposes. That about covers the feature set. There may have been more that I'm missing, but unfortunately, and I suspect due to the unfortunate window mishap, Tesla has not published the replay of the unveil, so I couldn't go back to try and catch anything that I might have missed the first time. So this brings us to the most controversial part of the truck, the design. The prototype unveiled to us was pure stainless steel without a curve to be found on the body. The truck looks almost like a giant triangle stacked on top of a rectangle from its profile on the side. It is the epitome of angularity. There are no two ways about this. You will either love or loathe this design. There is really no in-between here. With some time after the launch, it's grown on me some, especially after seeing some folks mock up some wraps for the Cybertruck. Uh, I, it seems to me that my dislike for it is that stainless steel look, but I would really like to see it in person before making a final decision. No reservations happening here for sure. I feel like seeing it in person with perspective in 3D space may have a big effect on my opinion though. Sometimes pictures and videos just don't do something justice. However, it seems that 250,000 adventurous souls have already indeed plunked down their $100 to get a spot in line for this futuristic truck. So I may well be in the minority on this opinion in the Tesla community, especially considering the Twitter responses I've been getting. I feel like it's duck and cover time. It's all good, though. Not the first time, and certainly not the last time, I'm going to be against the grain on a topic in the community. That is it for today's show. I do want to take a moment to thank everyone, and especially my patrons, very much for bearing with me lately on the lack of show production. My wife and I are still certainly adjusting to life with a tiny eight-pound soul that dictates your actions, and man, to say that we're not getting much sleep is an understatement. I'm so glad that I had the time off work to spare to hopefully try to get into a rhythm. Alas, everything is back to normal this week for work and as well for the show. I plan to be back to normal publishing, though super patrons may get to hear a baby crying in the background during pre- and post-show recording for a while. Also, I need to pay off a contest that I started right before my little girl arrived. The winner of the Obsidian Black Touch-Up Kit is Christy, at KW Architects on Twitter. Congratulations, Christy! Alright, this has been a long one, so it is time to wrap things up. Thanks to all my patrons supporting the show at patreon.com slash tesla tidbits. And as always, a special shout out to all the super patrons supporting the show at the $10 plus level. They're Ryan Scarborough, Lee Sweet, William Henry Crew III, Dory and Steve Guberman, Ralph and Cheryl Waterhouse, Adam Raymond Brown, Megawatt Photovoltaic Development, Todd Sullivan, Mitch Long, Zortec LED Canada, Morvin Og, Raymond and Deborah Malkowitz, T Sport Line, Travis and Cheyenne Rush, Chris Hovis, Craig Murphy, Vicky Kirk, Ricky Johnston, Bien Concepcion, Nathan Garza, Paul Gona, Ed Patterman, and Sunil Joseph. If you have feedback for me, the best way to be heard is to tweet at Tesla Tidbits and use the hashtag AskTeslaTidbits if you'd like your question to be considered for the show. Until next time, keep it charged and hit the road. <laughs>